Alright guys, Belem here back with a new video, and in this video, we're back talking about Big Brother Canada Season 12, where here I'll be doing my mid-season power ranking for the season, which is going to be a bit of a strange mid-season power ranking here, in the sense that, straight up, I've not been following BBCan12 as intensely as I have with pretty much every other BB Can season, where obviously when we had feeds, there was extensive content online all about what was going on in the feeds, and I followed a lot of that content. And at points, watched the feeds for myself. Where obviously with BB Can 11, where we just got the digital dailies, despite those digital dailies being very rocky, I still did watch some of them and listen to extensive coverage on those dailies. Well, if BB Can 12, I'm really haven't been following it as intensely and again i do feel like this season is one that while i am enjoying for what it is i do feel like i am struggling to care much about it largely due to the lack of online presence that the season seems to have obviously due to the lack of live feeds and mixing that with the fact that i do feel like we're also in a weird spot at this point in the game again we are around halfway through technically a little bit past it but hey we're at the point where the jury should be starting and despite that i feel like we don't really really know where the trajectory of the season's really going to where all a certain side of the house I do think definitely has the advantage at this current point it does very much feel like a house that could still technically go either way where there are really just a number of situations that could occur moving forward I don't really feel too confident where exactly the season's trajectory is going to be and even beyond that we obviously have this twist coming up pretty soon where again this video should be coming out on saturday yet on sunday we do have this big movie night massacre that's occurring that will send someone out of the game and like him we just really don't know a lot of how this season is going to play out which is what makes this ranking as a whole here a bit strange now because that i do think i'm going to make this assessment here a lot more based on long-term positioning more so than short-term positioning where typically i would have people that are in a more immediate danger a bit lower on the list than otherwise i feel like this is more so assessment of how i feel about these people long term in this game and their likelihood to win the game but before we do get to that i do want to talk about what's happened so far again talking about my general thoughts on the season and I talk about the boots so far and again like obviously I already mentioned that I haven't really been clicking with BBCan12 in the sense that again I haven't been following it as closely as I have in previous seasons but it's not a bad season I mean I know a lot of people were really frustrated early on this season just how much of a steamroll this seemed to be from the vets yeah I really didn't see it fully that way again I do feel like it's a season where a lot of chaotic things are happening despite the power structure mainly staying intact straight up a lot of the interesting gameplay from this season does stem from spicy v where obviously she is just an insane reality tv character a player that is just so messy and just doing way too much yet despite that being in a power position which kind of made the chaoticness of a lot of this season extremely entertaining and again, while i know people were also frustrated the dennis blind side i thought that was a fantastic tv moment as well where and again coming into this week we have this like lead up of this anthony spicy v battle finally coming to head and anthony figuring out spicy's game and again it does feel like this season's definitely on this upward trajectory and one where i mean it's been a mostly consistent ride i mean none of these weeks so far have been particularly bad though again i do still feel like there is this struggle for me and me feeling a bit of a lack of connection to the season just due to how little online presence it has but and anyway, with that let's talk about the boots so far talking about my thoughts on them starting off with janine and straight up, i don't really have many thoughts on janine i feel like janine just turned not to be kind of fine i mean not a terrible first boob but not a particularly great one either one that i think kind of wasted some opportunities but also got pretty unlucky with how the game was formatted and even her being taken out in the way she is i think is a bit of a misunderstanding where again anthony was under the assumption that she was coming for him when she really wasn't and actually wanted to take him far into the game and but overall janine was just kind of a nothing figure for me on this season and they get to donna who i was very disappointed to lose this early i think donna really had the potential to be a really great character one that possibly could have been up there or some of the great bb can characters yet yeah, instead she just ends up being an early boot that had a really fun exit but didn't really get to show much of her potential and like straight up again i don't know how much real potential there was from a game perspective to her while she was with the girls she did seem to be kind of aloof at the fact that she was very clearly on the bottom of them and and i think still a bit questionable as a player though someone that i think did have potential there and clearly had the motivation to play the game yet yeah, 
never really seemed that well positioned in the game in the grand scheme of things. But we then move on to Dennis. And again, Dennis's blindside on this season was just incredible to be to me. Well, yes, it's frustrating to see Vivek nominate his closest ally after being tricked by the majority alliance into doing so. But I just think the betrayal that was there, especially after Dennis obviously saved Vivek the previous week, was just so glorious to see. Now again, I was very disappointed to lose Dennis this early as I do think Dennis is a again another really great DBKN character one that really could have been a truly elite one if he made it further yet he gets sniped out here but again another one that I do think is a questionable player again I don't know why he won those first two vetoes when he didn't need to he was just such a very clear target for the majority of the house where again it wasn't shocking at him going here especially like most people wanting him out to begin with where while it is obviously shocking the fact that Vivek was the one to take him out again that was his best case scenario Vivek winning HOA and even didn't get that to benefit him. So again, like I don't think Dennis is the greatest player in the world, though obviously I do think he made for great TV and someone that I would actually like to see back down the road. And next up, we're moving on to Vivek. And Vivek is someone that straight I just genuinely feel bad bad for now obviously yes he made a dumb move and it's a move that completely screwed over his game it's a move that again so distrust with the people that he made the move for and this is that he's backstabbing his number one ally which again just shows everyone that he's willing to do something like that which again it's just a terrible move all around yeah again i just feel bad for him and how this all turned out to where obviously it is poetic in a way that yes he does get taken out due to that notion though he obviously essentially just gets switch screwed out of the game where obviously he was safe for the week and he wouldn't have been taken out had it not been for the fact that this twist happened at the last second that screwed him over to where again, I do feel bad for him in that light obviously beyond that he is this big super fan and someone that loved the show and seeing him get taken out in that way is also very disappointing to well again I do think he played terribly and he's someone that deserved that comeuppance in the sense that obviously yes he did make big mistakes for that to eventually occur I just feel like him being taken out in that way in that specific spot was a situation where again I just felt bad for the guy seeing him be really emotional as people told him to his face that they're voting him out and Dorga I mostly found him to be a pretty sympathetic figure by the end where again he's just a guy that was blindly loyal this one group that offered him safety and tricked him into doing something against his best interests Dorga I think his comeuppance was deserved I still can't not feel bad for the guy as a whole but with that we then get to the latest boot in Matthew who is boring yeah. Again, Matthew was there. I mean, barely on the show. I believe outside of his content about Lexus, I don't believe he was really even on the show before his boot week. And even then, he was severely under-edited. I feel like Matthew was just kind of there. Now, again, not a terrible player. And since I do think he's pretty good socially, and he's seen to have really good relationships in the house. He was extremely close to Lexus and Anthony and seemed to be a major pillar of that side. Yet... Again, I just think he's a very passive player. I mean, while he was looped into the Director's Alliance, he obviously was aloof to the Hot Chocolate Alliance, and even beyond that was kind of just a tag-along for Anthony, and didn't really seem to be doing much beyond that. Again, it didn't seem like he had particularly good relations with likes of Kayla or Victoria. He seemed to have a good relationship with Avery, though, again, not enough for Avery to not put him on the block, and now his campaign ends up not being particularly effective. Now, again, he obviously at least gets a 4-3 vote. I mean, that's something to give him some credit for, but beyond that I don't really feel like there's that much great for Matthew outside of he's just this generic palatable seemingly good hearted guy that most people will probably like though also one that just doesn't make for the greatest TV but with that that is every player that has been booted so far now let's get into the proper ranking itself again we have nine players to be ranking here but again a bit tough to assess these people again I, I am gonna go with more so long term assumptions about these people's games and where I think their games are going. So at number nine, the person who I think is the least likely to win this game is Tola. And Tola is a player here that I really just don't know where he's really going. Obviously, we know that he's aligned with Anthony, and I guess he seems to have a decent relationship with Lexus, and I believe him and Elijah have a good relationship, but really, Tola is just kind of there. I mean, he's someone that I don't know if he wins a jury vote if he gets to the end. I feel like it's going to be very difficult for him to garner the respect to win the game. Now, I do think there is a world where maybe he does win out and gains respects through comp wins, but really outside that, I don't really see him winning a jury vote at this point. I think he's definitely one of the least likely to win a jury vote. But I think the reason why he's lower than certain other person I think is probably on his level is the fact that I really have no real faith in Tola to play the game particularly well moving forward. I don't really 
get the sense that Tola has this great knowledge of the game, has this, has any real, like, awareness of his game. So again, I don't feel like Tola is particularly intentional in his game, and mixing out of the fact that I even think even short term, he's not in a great spot to where I do think he is probably in danger coming up. For a lot of people are talking about the notion of targeting Anthony, I don't think many people would actually target Anthony, and I think instead they would go so for his right-hand man, who is Tola, where obviously the Hot Chocolate Alliance is more incentivized to take him out. Really, I mean, for the women Hot Chocolate Alliance, the move is to take out Tola. I, mean, I do think Tola is someone that just seems primed to be taken out soon, even if he were on a path to win a jury vote to where I really just don't see any winning scenarios here for Tola and because that for me is here number nine. Now number eight we're moving on to a player that again I think this person's debatably the person that has the least amount of chance of winning a jury vote where I think this is a person that if he gets to the end I think it's very unlikely that he wins though I think there's probably a little bit more faith I have in him than with Tola and I also I think he's a little bit safer in the game as well and that person is Elijah aka Goose and again Goose is someone that I, I just don't really see winning a jury vote at this point again he had his very hectic HOH to where he really just burned a lot of social capital through that again nominating Tola when he didn't really need to not just directly targeting Bailey and to be fair I mean again the twist would have screwed him over anyway but he obviously like messes up his relationship with the hot chocolate women where again he pretty much pieces together spicy v's game but then just lets them know that he has and burns his relationship with them which is very questionable again he did not play that particularly well now this led to him being targeted this week until he was saved at the last second though i do feel like elijah at this point in the game though is relatively safe i don't know why you would really go for him unless you're really trying to not make a big move at this point though i think we're kind of late into the season for that to where I, I don't know why people would go for Elijah here. Now, yeah, I think there's definitely a world where if certain comps play out certain ways that Elijah could go, but I, I don't think there's a point in taking out Elijah at this point. And he just seems like this very easy goat to potentially take to the end. And even if not, then he's his pawn star that's very willing at this point to just be the nominee every week to where again, Elijah, I, I think he's going to struggle winning the game. I think he played the game pretty poorly back in week four and obviously just his openness to go on the block early on is also not particularly great but i do think again moving forward while i think he struggles with winning a jury vote i at least have more faith in elijah to maneuver through the game a bit better than someone like tola where i think tola is really more so just at the whim of whatever anthony does and how people react to anthony in particular to where i feel like with goose there's at least a little bit more there again recently we saw him building this relationship with todd again we see him having decent reads at points even though he doesn't know what to do with them but again i do think there is something good there from elijah which is enough for me to put him here at number eight now number seven we're moving on to player that i'm very conflicted on as i do one very much question how intentional this person's game is and beyond that i even question how much of this person's game is a game and that person is todd and todd is someone that again i just find to be a massive enigma on this season i mean someone that doesn't know the game particularly well i don't believe he's really watched the show at all and has been on the bottom really the entire season yet despite that i do think he is someone that is well liked in the house and someone that i do think has garnered some respect i do think if todd gets to the end i do look at him as a more likely winner than the likes of elijah and tola and again i do think he did some good work in this last week and pulling in elijah again i don't know how intentional it is but again at least he's doing good social work there or again it does seem like they're a duo at this point in the game and considering his connection to bailey as well like i do think he is in a somewhat decent ish spot now, i do very much worry about hot chocolate just coming back together and through that he would become a pretty major target at that point which i would not be completely shocked if that does happen and realistically i don't see todd making it much deeper into this game yet again i do think todd has done some decent work now and also again i could see him winning if he got to the end i just don't really have much faith in todd to do what he needs to do to win the game because that for me he's here at number seven now number six we're moving on to player that i am also very conflicted on as i think there's a world where this person is pretty safe in the game 
Yeah, again, I do think like Todd, there's this worry about if the power structure reforms like it did. I think this person's probably in a lot of danger. And that person is Bailey. And again, Bailey is someone that is incredible on the show. I, I do think Bailey is probably one of the best newbies of this cast and someone that I could definitely see being a potential returnee down the road. Yeah. In terms of this specific season, I think she's playing a rocky game. I, I was, I think an issue is the fact that she is so blindly loyal to the all-girl alliance by her being very clearly on the bottom of it. However, I do think it interesting thing about her current position is the fact that she is kind of in the middle of this big war between Spicy and Anthony to where again if Anthony were to take a shot at Spicy V I think that shot would more so land on like Zakela or Avery than it would on Bailey well otherwise obviously the shot would land on someone like Atola to where and I think Bailey should be relatively safe in that aspect though I think there is still a world where if Anthony and Tola at power they instead go for Bailey in the on that again I think there's still that worry that hot chocolate comes back together and through that bailey would become a big target at that point as well now i think no matter what bailey is someone i am very much expecting to have a lot of win equity at the end i do feel like if she gets to the end especially against any of the women that are not hot chocolate i think she stands a very good chance at winning the game at that point so again, I do think her path currently of getting all the way to the end is just a pretty rocky one to where I don't really have much faith in her being able to squeeze her way to the end, which is why she's here at number six. Not number five, and at number five here, we have probably one of the toughest positions to land this person, this being a person who I think has been playing pretty well, despite, again, things not necessarily going well for this person i do feel like they are playing mostly optimally obviously i think there are some withstanding issues but that player is anthony douglas and again bb can 12 here seeing anthony douglas back is still pretty insane to me while he was someone that i was fully expecting to see back back when i did the cast assessment i think actually seeing him play bb can again is pretty insane here and i think so far his run has been somewhat impressive obviously he is in the majority alliance of the hot chocolate alliance that's been running the game though i think obviously an issue is the fact that he is very clearly on the bottom of that alliance though obviously has been doing good work and building these other bonds outside of that alliance only for him to obviously just lose those numbers in the last few weeks but really i think anthony's game and like how he's been playing it is not necessarily bad i do think again there probably is some issues here and, and the fact that he didn't really seem to understand how immediate the threat of spicy v is to his game and how much he's throwing him under the bus and obviously now he seemed to figure that out which i mean we'll see how that plays out moving forward but yeah i really feel like anthony is essentially just playing the same game as last time where i see a lot of people reacting to anthony a lot more negatively this time than last season yet i genuinely feel like he's playing the exact same way he's doing the exact same things he's again still being a bit cocky i think he's always been very cocky in the game and he's being pretty condescending in specific fights that he's in though again i think he always is kind of that and he's still coaching people up he's still doing a lot of the same things he was doing last season though is obviously doing so from a lesser position where again last time he had the pretty boys he had dane as his really close number one he doesn't really have those numbers in this season where again if we're comparing again dane to spicy v obviously spicy v is a much worse ally for him someone that's constantly throwing him under the bus and is even talking about potentially targeting him though again she claims she isn't in her drs but and obviously just the hot chocolate alliance as a whole doesn't really benefit him in going to the end with again it is going to the end with three women that are extremely close all very competent comp competitors in a position where anthony's never been a particularly good comp competitor and a position where even if he does get to the end with them i could definitely see a shot of him losing where it does very much seem like that pro women sentiment that was there during the preseason of a lot of the women talking about wanting another woman to win i do feel like that is a pretty prominent thing on this season to where I would not be shocked if Anthony gets to the end and just simply doesn't win the jury votes and doesn't win partially due to that notion. So again, because I feel like it's very tough to rank Anthony on this list. Now, again, I'm going with number five here. It's where I can straight up the top five here, all the Hot Chocolate Alliance. And Anthony is essentially on the bottom of that. And that's why he's here number five. Again, I do think he is in a much worse spot than a lot of the other hot chocolate members again he's someone that is being targeted by certain members outside of the majority well also is being someone that 
is clearly at the bottom of the majority alliance that he's in. So while he obviously still has Tola still, and I think he still has at least some bond with Lexus, and I think there's still a world where Spicy keeps him around for long term. It's still not a good spot for him to be in, and just in general, I do feel like he is someone that doesn't really seem poised to win the game at this point, with just how big of a target he is, the fact that he's at the bottom of his majority alliance, and he's even guaranteed to win a jury vote. To where, while I have a lot of faith in Anthony Douglas as a player, and I think he is still playing a really impressive game especially considering the position he came into the game with or just so many people are talking about how big of a threat he is I feel like he is playing pretty well despite that though again not flawless and, and again still not in a great position which is why he's here number five now number four and again the top four here are the four women within the hot chocolate alliance over at number four here I think I'm gonna surprisingly leave off Kayla and Kayla's someone that's obviously in the core of the Hot Chocolate Alliance. She's part in the top three with Avery and Victoria. She's someone that, again, on paper, it is a very strong spot in the game. Again, she is someone that is seemingly decent at competition. She is seemingly very social and mostly well-liked in the house. And she's someone that is playing the game pretty hard. Now, I do think she's playing very sloppily, where, again, I think she's essentially just going along with a lot of what Spicy V is doing. And again, we'll talk about Spicy V, but Spicy V is obviously a very chaotic player and I, I think a lot of the moves that this women's alliance has made up to this point have been self-sabotaging moves This really just sums up a lot of the women's gameplay from the hot chocolate alliance where it really just feels like they're in this like masterful position they were in this masterful position coming into the season where again automatically there's a lot of talk about wanting to make this all women's alliance and mixing out of the fact that the entire format of the show seems very catered towards the vets and trying to give them more power again it very much felt like victoria and the women that worked alongside her were essentially poised to be in this very dominant position. Despite that, I feel like they are making really bad moves to their game. Again, getting rid of their own numbers in those first few weeks and now finally making moves and getting rid of numbers on the opposing side, but doing so by burning a lot of capital with the people on the other side. Really, a lot of the Hot Chocolate Alliance's gameplays has been extremely sloppy. Yeah, despite that, I think, again, there's definitely a chance Kayla wins. Where, again, if she does end up being a decent cop competitor moving forward and does continue to make these big moves, I could see her winning a jury vote. However, I do think out of these top four... I probably see her garnering the least amount of respect, which is the reason why she's at number four here. I just feel like for her, I just see a tough time beating the other people that she's likely to get to the end with. So while I think she would probably easily beat a lot of the people lower on this list, I don't think she would beat the likes of an Avery or a Victoria. I don't know if she's very well respected in the house. So again, I think she's liked, but I don't know how much they respect her game. And the fact that we just like seemingly have this constant talk about how she's very flip flop and already have some of the men not fully trusting her like I do feel like she's also in not the greatest spot either where I do think if a shot were to be made against the Victoria Avery Kayla contingent I feel like Kayla is the most likely to take a fall for that group at this point so again for me it's it's kind of a mixed bag with Kayla again I think Kayla is definitely still in a decent spot in the game I think she's someone that is still pretty likely to win the game if she gets to the end or I think her path there is a bit rocky at this point to where I, I do think she is just the easy person to take a shot at of that group group and does have some people openly distrusting her which again for me is enough to put her here at number four now number three we're moving on to player that i think you could argue this person being below kaylovs is a person that's not in that true true core yeah i feel like this person could be on an upward trajectory at this point and that person is lexus and obviously lexus and is in this pretty decent position being part of the hot chocolate alliance and has these good bonds with anthony and tola and had a good one with matt though obviously that's also a hindrance to her game obviously she's not fully with the girls that are seemingly running the game though is alongside them despite not being this like whore number for them and while she's someone that hasn't really been loved socially in the house, particularly from her fellow women, where again, right away back in week one, there was already talk about how she's isolating herself and she's just with Matt. I do think the fact that she is without Matt at this point, though, is something that does probably prop up her game. Again, it does seem like right away after Matt goes, she seems to be playing both sides pretty actively and, and talking with both Anthony and the girls. She seems to be someone that could up her social game now that she doesn't have Matthew to preoccupy her and and in general, I do feel like this is kind of a new start for Lexus. 
or it kind of feels like her game being kind of renewed at this point in the game and considering the fact that she also seems to be pretty good at competitions again playing the middle she has connections that a lot of the other women don't seem to have and mixing out of the fact that she still probably would benefit from this pro women sentiment again i do think there's a lot of potential win equity here for lexus where i actually see lexus having a good chunk of options moving forward to where unless this more anti-Lexus notion that came up earlier in the game reappears. I do feel like Lexus is someone that could very much turn her game around and just all around seems to be a pretty well-rounded player here and a pretty rational strategic thinker to where like, I think there's definitely a path to win here, which is enough to put her here at number three. Now number two, and the top two here is very tough where Really, for a lot of how I've been assessing the season before this week, I've had the number two person here at number one. I do think this is a person that has been pretty safe for a lot of this season, also in a pretty good spot in the game for a lot of the season, to where I don't necessarily agree with the moves that they've been making, I kind of saw them as a more stable presence in the game. However, I think when making this list now, I think if you really were to put a gun to my head and say, who is going to win this season, I think I would say the number one person. So because that number two, despite this person being a bit more stable in the game and being my actual winner pick, I'm going to go with Avery. And again, Avery to me is essentially turning out how I expected her to be. She's essentially just like a BB can version of Casey in a very stable, loyal number to her people. A person who is a sound strategic thinker. She's not a complete dud strategically, but she's also not particularly interesting either. And it just feels like a pretty decent all around player here. Though again, I do qualm with her HOH. I do think her targeting Goose to begin with is seemingly misguiding and Goose is someone that really thought he was working with Avery and actually thought of Avery as his number number one coming into that week so for her to target him is pretty insane and then for her to follow that up with her backdooring Matt someone that also thought he was close to her though to be fair the veto result obviously was a lot more difficult of the choice at that point as putting up Todd upsets Bailey and you know, there's other ramifications from that and obviously just the ideal target would have been Tola but Tola won the veto but still I do feel like Avery kind of makes some questionable decisions during her HOH reign but I do think she's leaving it still again in a pretty decent position again she's still part of this core alliance with the hot chocolate alliance of her Kayla Victoria I think she is someone that garners a bit more respect than Kayla again I think Kayla's looked at as a bit more wishy-washy well I feel like Avery is someone that I think is a lot more cool-headed and someone that I think could garner more respect if she gets to the end even beyond that I feel like Avery is someone that also knows the game a bit better I mean she's someone that seems to have a pretty stable strategic mind where again I, I disagree with how she ended up playing this last HOH, but I do think she understands the game certainly more than the likes of Victoria or Kayla. So again, I think those are definitely reasons why I would have her pretty high here. And again, I think this is purely assessment of how they've played up to this point. I think there definitely is an argument for Avery being number one here. However, I think there are some worry points. Again, like Kayla, I do think there is the worry of if there is a shot to be taken at Victoria's Alliance, I could definitely see the shot landing on Avery. And then beyond that, I don't know how good Avery actually is at competitions, where obviously she has won this last HOH, though that was a little bit of a crap shooty style comp, slash, again, kind of skill-based, but again, not really that by that much, to where I don't know how consistent she's really going to be moving forward. So again, I do think there's some question marks, yet yeah. I, I still look at her pretty highly. Again, I've had her number one in my power ranking for a bit at this point. Yeah, I do think in comparison to the number one pick, I feel like that person's just the most likely to win the game at this point, despite probably playing worse. That's why that Avery ends up being here number two. Now number one, the number one player in my midseason power ranking for BB Can 12 ends up being Spicy V, which is weird as again, I think Spicy V's been playing pretty badly on this season. Again, she has a lot of influence and she is getting her way at many points in the season, yet I don't feel like much of what she's doing in the game is actually to her benefit. Again, she's playing this very chaotic game of essentially taking out her own numbers early on in the game only to then get upset like Anthony for taking out her numbers when she's the one that pointed that target on them to begin with and then now it's burning her relationship with Anthony and now Anthony's fully onto her game and again it's this very precarious position for Spicy V yeah despite the fact that again Anthony could potentially be targeting Victoria at this point I just don't know how Victoria goes home where again I think if Victoria's on the block against anybody at this point I don't think she goes home again I don't think the votes are really there and and I feel like Victoria's type player, if she gets to the end, she's a shoe in to win. I, I just do not see a path 
for her to lose the game unless she pulls it. Unless she has these terrible goodbye messages, which to be fair, I mean, she has had up to this point. But if she's someone that's not really able to own up to her game, which again, also to be fair, I could definitely see a world where Victoria's not owning up to her game. Like, yeah, obviously, yeah, in that position, she could potentially lose it. But I feel like she's someone that just naturally garners respect. People loved Spicy Bee coming into the season. People wanted to work with her. And she has this undying loyalty from the likes of Avery and Kayla and Bailey. So again, I think there's shoe and jury votes for her if she gets to the end. And mixing out of the fact that again, Anthony has the outside of game relationship with her. Elijah, for some reason, thought that they were extremely close until he realized he was being played by her recently. But again, I think he would have respect for her game to vote for her. And Todd seems to have a good relationship with her as well. Though where again, like Spicy Bee's just in this very dominant position. The where again, I think she's playing terribly. She straight up i don't think she's changed at all again people are talking about how spicy is playing better this time than last time i don't even think that's the case i think she's playing the exact same i think she was just given a much better starting position where last time she was in this position where no one really wanted to work with her she was on the out from very early on and tried to make these big moves to get in this big majority alliance and instead just found herself on the bottom of them and someone that was easily picked off by the end yeah and this season she's handed a majority alliance she's given this game structure that is set up for a vet to succeed and mixing in that and the fact that again she has this good reputation people want to work with her right away and again also this pro women sentiment as well the where again like it just feels like everything is there for spicy v to just really dominate the season and go on the win to where i would not be shocked that that's the path we're headed towards so where while again i think spicy v is definitely not playing great not playing optimally in the slightest i feel like she's still this very dominant position to where for me it's just even hard to imagine a world where spicy v doesn't make it to the very end of the game i, I think she's a shoe in to make end game at this point i don't really see a path for her to be taken out of the game for sure in this upcoming round and while again i think she could definitely self-sabotage her game i guess she's very prone to that i still think she's on this path to success here i think she's the most likely to win this season so even though her path is definitely a lot rockier than someone like an avery's i just feel like i have more confidence in her actually getting to the end and winning the game because that for me i have victoria here number one but there we go i mean that's my mid-season power ranking for big brother canada 12 again a very strange ranking for me with me again just feeling like i don't have much information to go off of this ranking but still we did it anyway now again moving forward i'll still do a review for bb can 12 at the end of the season along with a player ranking following that as well also you have a lot of other shows like survivor amazing race challenge all stars going on that i'll be doing content on as well and while we're here i might as well also formally announce on the channel something that i did start about a week ago i haven't really had the opportunity to talk about it in a video but very recently i did actually make a new membership tier where i mean on this channel i've always had a one dollar membership tier which was simply just there because youtube paid me to make a membership tier yeah. recently youtube's been making some changes the most important of which for me is the ability to make scheduled videos member only something that's pretty important for me in the sense that i make videos well ahead of time uh, something that again if you don't follow me outside of just watching the videos on this channel to where again as consequence of me wanting to make two videos a week i do have a very ridiculous way of making videos to where essentially i make them in massive batches i work on six months of videos at a time and prep them all at the same time record them all in a row edit them all in a row to where again i typically have a good chunk of videos just lying in the back burner being scheduled to come out at some point so with that new function i said you know what screw it let's create a new membership tier so at 4.99 a month i do have a new membership tier that will allow you to watch all these videos that are waiting in the back burner and it's actually just early access to videos to where for that way it's not much more work on my end as straight i don't really have much time to do more than what i am currently doing but it's still is something that again allows Allows me to give something by having an actual proper membership tier to where as of right now i mean there are over 30 videos available on that tier to where from this point forward whenever i finish a video it will be instantly made member only until it's obviously scheduled release date which again many times videos are finished months before they end up coming out or really outside of these timely videos or reviews or player rankings of seasons or mid-season power rankings or cast assessments outside of those really most other videos are made well in advance which again is something i've been doing for years anyway i've literally been doing this kind of structuring of the channel for literally three plus years at this point so really it's not even changing anything about the content on the channel for non-members you still get the same content that you were going to get anyway so it's just for people that again do want to be a member now you get early access to videos and while the 
the uploading of new content can be a bit sporadic at points just due to the nature of how I make videos. There'll pretty much never be a point where there's not at least 15 plus videos available in the back burner. I did feel like with that new feature from YouTube to allow scheduled videos be member only before they officially release, I felt like it was a good time to start that tier. So again, if you want to become a member of the channel, that'll be cool. If you don't, again, nothing really changes. There'll still be at least two videos a week on this channel either way. There we go. I mean, that's pretty much all I got to say for this video here. For my mid-season power rank for BB Can 12, thank you for watching.